I'd like to echo the sentiments about Avery, our new sister in Christ. We're certainly thankful for her and welcome her to the family. As far as tonight's study, I'd like for us to consider a passage towards the end of the book of Acts, uh, chapter 27. We find there where the Apostle Paul and many others have some difficulty traveling. We find here in verse 1 of that chapter, Acts chapter 27, where he is a prisoner of Rome and he is on his way to Rome. And they would soon depart into a ship on the way to Rome. And I would like for us to consider how he deals with this difficult situation, uh, the adverse difficulties that uh, was presented to him as well as the passengers of this ship. I would like to drop down to verses 9 through 12 for this passage. We find this, this text saying, the inspired Luke records for us, Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which Paul or which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Finis and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. So we see even before the, the ship is, is setting sail that Paul was mindful of everyone else on this ship. He was not only worried about himself, but he, he exhibited concern for others to the point where he warned them not to take this voyage. But we also see the reaction that they would eventually depart either way. With this idea, there are many times as we as Christians are expected to warn others. We find this principle in Acts chapter 20, verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. We also find this idea given to the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 33, verses 7 through 9, which reads as follows. So thou, o son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth. And warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So the prophet of old was expected to warn Israel. Well, we as Christians are expected to warn our fellow, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ in spiritual Israel. But that would also extend to those outside the church, the, war, the world at large. However, we must realize that there are many who do not care to hear our warning. Thus, our teachings, our warnings will eventually fall on deaf ears. Matthew chapter 11, verse 15. We see this idea throughout all of Jesus' teaching. We also make note of this concept on the day of Pentecost. We always are thankful for those 3,000 brethren, those souls that were saved and added to the church. But think about the large number of, of Jews and proselytes there that chose not to obey the gospel. Well, they exhibited their deaf ears. They did not heed the warnings that were presented to them by the apostles in their teaching on that day. We see also that from our text that Paul did not become overcome with fear, but rather he was able to give hope to those present on the ship. We'll find this in verses 21 through 26 of our text. It says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, 
and have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must cast upon a certain island. So first, we have an inspired account of the apostles saying, I told you so. I warned you, you didn't listen. Now this is what's going to happen. But he also followed it up with comfort. Be of good cheer. He mentions that twice. Even in the state of those on this ship, uh, we see there was a great tempest um, on this journey. Um, similar a storm would what we be considered a northeaster in our harsh way of speaking. So no doubt this crew and all the prisoners were afraid. They more than likely lost hope. They were expecting to be destroyed. Yet the Apostle Paul here says, be of good cheer. And he repeats himself. Now we too are expected to give encouraging statements to others, to provide this hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. We know that without hope, there is dread, there's fear, there's terror. Romans chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. But we see here that Paul, not only seeking to encourage others to not be afraid, but also provided for their own nourishment. He cared for the well-being of others, not only mentally, obviously spiritually, but in this sense also physically. We'll find this in verse 33 through 38 of our text. It says, And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For thou shalt not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer. And they also took some meat. And when and we were in all in the ship, 203 score 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. So again, we point out that Paul was concerned about the physical well-being of all these members of the ship, the prisoners, the crew, and obviously himself. We too need to be concerned about the affairs of others, not to the point of being busybodies and meddling, but aware of certain uh, circumstances, aware of uh, those who are close to us, especially the household of faith. So we need to be prepared to give, to provide necessities of our brothers and sisters in Christ, but also for those who are outside the church. Uh, we need to be aware of those who need to be nourished. Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 45. Now we, we must always realize that the spiritual nourishment takes higher precedence and is far more important than the physical sustaining of the flesh. But oftentimes it can be used as a doorway to provide that spiritual nourishment. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, and 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, which reads as follows. For bodily exercise profiteth little. It is profitable, but it's little in comparison with godliness, which is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So living a godly lifestyle has benefits now in our physical life on the earth, but obviously it points toward the ultimate goal, which is heaven. So living a godly life ultimately affords us the right to obtain heaven when this life is over. 
further feeding into the idea of hope. We're saved by hope. Now, I know all of us have faced certain difficulties in our lives, and we're going to continue facing difficulties. There's, we've been talking about storms recently. There's tornadoes, Oklahoma, across the other parts of the country. People are going to be in adverse situations. But as members of the church, we should never let a, a catastrophe such as that go to waste. Um, not to be political because there's certain issues along with that, but as members of the church, there's no greater opportunity to show our love for our brethren and even those of the world when such an opportunity arises. Hurricane strikes, especially in this area that we're in, and we're able to help. Oftentimes it shows you who, who members are actually willing to help and to the extent they're willing to help. So you, you're able to sift through those brethren who are fake and you see those who are strong and sincere because very rarely are people who are fake or willing to give of their time and money to support weaker people, to support those who are in different situations in difficult times. But ultimately, how we react to these difficult situations, these different storms we face in our lives, is going to be more important in the long run. It's going to show us our mettle. It's going to prove us. And rather than becoming callous and bitter, it needs to allow us to be content. It needs to, it always presents us a good opportunity to encourage others, and we need to be able to take it. We should never allow external circumstances, negative as they may be, to discourage us as Christians from performing good deeds. Good is how the Bible would define it as. So I hope this study has been beneficial to you. Appreciate your attention. Thank you.